I would like you to meet someone. Uh, viewers of the Rachel Maddow Show, I would like to introduce you to Captain John Thomas. He is a company commander in charge of a number of very dangerous checkpoints ringing Kandahar City. At checkpoint 7-4 overlooking the Argandab, he commands a platoon of 19 Americans alongside 30 Afghan police. And Captain Thomas is very, very impressive. So for, this is a watchtower. Yes. Uh, this is... This is a 240 Bravo machine gun. 240 Bravo machine gun. Uh, this would be manned usually by ANCOP officers or by U.S.? It's partner. partner. So we'll have one so each. Oh. And the road that we're overlooking here uh, goes from where to where? Uh, this is the main road that cuts from southwest to Kandahar City all the way up into Highway 1, which is dead center of Kandahar City. Okay, so Panj Panjway is... Panjway is all the way down that road, yes. Okay, and Panjway and... And Zari. And Zari mm -hmm. are two regions where there's been a lot of fighting, a lot of insurgent activity. So what's the, what's the mission of this checkpoint and of the other three checkpoints mm -hmm. that you lead? So within my uh, area of operations here in Subdistrict 7, each of these checkpoints is strategically placed on one of the main routes in and out of the city with the purpose of interdicting or disrupting the freedom of movement, as you said, uh, of the insurgents either coming into Kandahar City or going out. So that way we can kind of be that outer gate so that if they want to come in, they've got to come through us first to allow that outer cordon of protection and that way the inner city police, the AMP, the ANA, the gyro folks can focus more on developing and establishing their inner security. Uh, so it's more of an augmentation force initially. In, in terms of this checkpoint, and we were, we're, earlier today we were at a police substation. Mm -hmm. Police substation has a different mission, which is that they're yep. static, they're there, they're there to be a resource to the community and also to be security. Yep. You're here to stop traffic, check it before you allow it to go through. How, what are you looking for? How are you? How do you know if the per, a person that you're stopping is uh, is trouble? Well, you, you never know, but there's indicators. And what you try and look for is, you know, multiple uh, military-age males or a vehicle that looks like it's weighed down or a vehicle that's acting erratically are some immediate indicators that should trigger the person to stop them and search them. Uh, beyond that, it's just to not set a pattern and be random and just say every certain truck, every blue truck or you know every red motorcycle will stop for this period of time. So that way it's just a random, even swath across the board um, to create the effect that at any time a person that wants to come into Kandahar City understands that they have the capability of being searched. Now, I mean, where we are, I mean, you can see from the you can see from the landscape here that we are on the edge of the city. But this is a populated area. We're not mm -hmm. far from Sarapoza Prison, Correct. big prison, a lot of market areas and uh, yes. uh, street vendors and stuff um, and shops there. So I, I imagine that this is going to be pretty disruptive to the people who live here who aren't bad guys. That, that is a common uh, discussion. As soon as we move in, we, we bring all the local elders together and we say, okay, hey, we're so-and-so, we're here to do this, and what are your concerns? And it's all, almost always the very first question is, well, what is it going to do to our normal patterns of life? Yeah. And so that immediately is a discussion and a relationship starting right there to say, hey, our purpose is not to disrupt your life, but to prevent other folks from disrupting your life. So as long as we constantly stay in contact with each other, and the ANCOP is the key part of that, because they have the heartbeat of the, of the people here, and they already have that inherent knowledge of the area. So then they're that direct connect with the locals to build that immediate trust. Well, the ANCOP, though, are a national force. They're not, mm -hmm. not Kandaharis, necessarily. Not necessarily. But in this case, the way we've moved in together, we've got the AMP that are at the checkpoint, the ANCOP that moved in, and so now we've got this super partnered force, the folks that are inherently, you know, have lived here forever, the ANCOP that ha bring that professionalism and discipline and skill to the table, team that up with us to help kind of bring that trifecta together, and that's where we're gaining it. So before the AMP have departed the checkpoint to go back for training or refit or whatever, we're really focusing on building that relationship now while the AMP are still here. That and that that to me seems like a key strategic thing in terms of people watching this in the United States trying to understand uh, why we're putting somebody cool like you in danger <laughs> in a place like this. Um, I mean, if the locals here look at the Kandahar police mm -hmm. or the ANP and say, you know, traditionally our relationship with police has been one of paying bribes and not mm -hmm. having a lot of service and it's been difficult, right. I understand that when they look at ANCOP, ANCOP's supposed to be a much more professional force, supposed to really be uh, trained, especially on ethics issues and leadership issues mm -hmm. and things like that. ANCOP's going to leave ultimately, mm -hmm. just like the U.S. is going to leave ultimately. Are the local people here going to want their locals to be the police officers? Are they going to want Afghans from somewhere else in the country who are professionals, who are mm -hmm. not from here, to be doing their policing? 
Right. You see what I, I, see what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So they, they see, you know, the ANCOP bringing a, a key asset to the table and then the historic negative connotation with AMP. Yeah. So, I mean, absolutely, there's going to be that temptation of, man, I just wish we could have these folks, but that's where it lies in terms of, it's almost like Afghan on Afghan peer pressure. Yeah, You know, exactly. your big brother shows exactly up, shows you how to do it right, so now you want to work harder to get better. And so that's our focus is we're kind of the mediator of that process to help, you know, help get the AMP up to that par and then beyond, and so now they'll just start driving each other. Yeah. And so, I mean, absolutely, they'll, they'll wonder, oh, man, the ANCOP did it great, but I don't think it'll just be the ANCOP. I think they'll see the ANCOP and the AMP working together is what made it great. Yeah. And so that's the key part to continue to push on to the locals. So they'll continue to have that buy-in with the folks that they grew up with. It's and so what it sounds like we're talking about and forgive me, it sounds like we're talking about like details of this local police operation, but ultimately this is the success of the war. Which yeah. is that partnership. You guys come in here and you uh, do what the American military is capable of doing, which in security terms is unparalleled anywhere in the world. You work with these well-trained professional class of Afghan national police officers, the NCOP, which we've trained up in order to mentor good policing behavior. Absolutely. And then we hope and expect and try and facilitate and enable that the Afghan police will be doing this job after we leave. Absolutely. Can can do it. That's the success of the war. I think so. And the most we can hope for, at least, just as, as a company or even just a platoon at a checkpoint, is to set the conditions and set that baseline of understanding and trust between the locals and the Afghan either national police or civil order police just to say there is hope there is progress we are improving ca capacity you know skills the uh, you know equipment of all these forces and just to set that baseline and give them the hope that no matter who's here or who leaves no matter how long it takes for that to happen there is a way forward and we see how it can work so let's buy into it yeah. and I think that's how we win. So you couldn't ask for a better guide to Afghanistan than NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel. Uh, one afternoon, Richard gave me a fascinating deluxe tour of a market in Kabul. I'm the enormously tall one who looks like a Martian um, wearing the headscarf quite unattractively. Uh, that's next.